Well, folks, here we are again with uh, part six, and we'll go ahead and continue our presentation. Well, this time we're going to be talking about how the government uh, sometimes intervenes into market operations for various reasons. Obviously, we start off with the supply and demand being in equilibrium, and we have a situation where the government establishes a price floor. Okay? And what, uh, for whatever the reason is, uh, the government wants to protect coffee growers and uh, who wish to make more money per pound of coffee than just f the $5 per pound that the free market equilibrium will provide them. And so they've lobbied the government to take some other action. So the government establishes this price floor of $8. Now what that means is that nobody is going to charge less than $8 a pound for coffee and the government goes a step further and they say that they will purchase any of the excess supply that the, that the uh, farmer is not able to sell. So what happens? At $8 a pound, suppliers want to supply 10 million pounds of coffee in this case okay. and what do the consumers want to demand well at ten dollar or eight dollars I'm sorry at eight dollars a uh, pound consumers only want to buy two million pounds they don't want ten million they only want two okay so at that eight dollar price suppliers are supplying ten consumers are only willing to buy two and we end up with a a uh, surplus of 8 million uh, pounds of coffee in this example. Okay. And so what ends up happening is what, what do we do with the surplus? Well if the government wasn't going to step in and do anything with the surplus then that surplus would just go to waste. As a matter of fact uh, several years ago we had the same thing with price supports for milk uh, here in America and the dairy farmers were just literally dumping the milk down the drain. Uh, because uh, you know there was no no market for that milk at that price, and yet the price was fixed. Okay. Uh, so uh, in this case, the government's going to turn around and buy the surplus, and we do have examples of farm support uh, laws here in the United States where the government does just that. Many years ago, uh, the government had price supports on certain dairy products, including cheese and the government bought all that surplus cheese that the consumers wouldn't buy at the price support level and uh, I can remember that they would then distribute that surplus cheese to senior citizens people on social security and to people who were on welfare well at the time my uh, ex-mother and father-in-law were on um, you know social security and they would get these five pound blocks of cheddar cheese and uh, any time that my ex-wife and I went home uh, to visit family, invariably my mother-in-law would hand us another five-pound block of cheese to take with us because they had more cheese than they could ever eat. Okay, and it was a case of the inefficiencies of the market because the government got involved and uh, set this price floor to, to help the farmers. Now, there's another situation as uh, trying to accomplish the same thing that the government can do. And here we, again we start off with our uh, situation in equilibrium. Okay? And this time the government sets what's called a target price. Now, what the target price will still be $8, but what the government says is it says to the suppliers, you sell as much as you can at the free market price. Okay? And whatever, your, uh, whatever price you get that is less than $8 a, a pound, will pay you the extra to get you up to eight dollars a pound okay so what happens is the equilibrium level is five dollars a pound consumers will buy six thousand or six million pounds at five dollars a pound and the suppliers are willing to supply six million pounds at five dollars a pound okay so we're going to clear the market in terms of the amount of coffee that's produced okay however the government's going to turn around and subsidize the farmers by an additional three dollars a pound for each one of those six million pounds that the farmers produced. Okay. 
and we call this a target price system. And again, you'll have a homework problem that deals with exactly this situation, and that's taken right out of some of the farm support uh, policies that have been in place for, for decades in the United States. Okay. So that's how the target price works. Okay. And we'll continue talking about uh, how the government intervenes in the market in uh, Part 7 in just a few minutes.